Hello, and thank you for joining us for week 30 of the Bible reading plan. And I want to remind you, if you have not picked up one of these handy-dandy bookmarks that tells you each day what you're supposed to read in the Bible reading plan, you can pick one up in the Hebrews Coffee Station. You can pick one up on the entrances for the sanctuary. You can pick one up one in the foyer or in small group classrooms. So just pick one up. It's a bookmark. I mean, see what we did there? Yeah. I mean, I it's mean, so it handy. It has multiple uses. Yeah. You know, I, you could pick your teeth with it or something. You could. Like that. You know, yeah. you can flick stuff at your neighbor in church, you know, do whatever. You yeah. Know. <laughs> so just stay with the plan. That's right. And mm-hmm. you have our highlight for I this week. I got the highlight. I believe I do have the highlight. Uh, I'm going to try not to talk as much as I seem like I did last week. No, I you, feel go like we went, okay. you go ahead. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I'll talk a lot then. Yeah. Uh, the highlight, we were looking at the book of Jeremiah, uh, in particular the chapter 18 and 19, just some pieces out of that. And and he's, he's talking about this uh, image of clay um, and, and clay jars and a potter's clay. And, you know, um, God uses those kind of images, right, to tell us something. You know, he doesn't need to use clay as a clay, to, you know, to actually write the word, he's using that for our benefit, for mm-hmm. us to understand what's going on. He, he starts in, in uh, the parable of the potter in uh, chapter 18. He says, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down at once to the potter's house. There I will reveal, reveal my words to you. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working away at the wheel. But the jar that he was making from the clay became flawed in the potter's hand, so he made it into another jar, as it seemed right for him to do. And so, you know, Jeremiah's looking at this. He said, Jeremiah, go down there and understand what you're seeing Mm -hmm. there, right? And he sees this potter, and, you know, I think we all understand, you know, clay, you know, even though we don't really do that a whole lot anymore. It was a big deal back then, right? You did it in art class, like in high (laughs) school or something. Yeah, I probably made a little ashtray or something like that. (laughs) Ashtray. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, you know, watching that process, because the clay is pliable, right, Mm -hmm. Uh, to start with, it's pliable, and he's kind of spinning that wheel, and he's shaping it and molding it and trying to get it just right for the purpose that it needs to be used for. You know, if he's making a a cup, he wants to make it cup-shaped, you know, and that'll hold water. If he's Mm -hmm. making a... Uh, you know, a bowl, you know, uh, he wants to make it bowl shaped, you know, and he wants it to be able to, you know, contain whatever you're going to put in the bowl. So yeah. he has a purpose that he's trying to do. And when he starts looking at that wheel and what he's shaping, if he sees that it ain't turning out right, mm-hmm. what does he do? He kind of scraps it, mm-hmm. you know, he pushes it back down and then just rebuilds it mm-hmm. right because the clay is pli- pliable. And the clay can do that, right? Uh, so he's trying to show Jeremiah something here in that, look, while while you are pliable, while you are to the point where you will listen to me, while you are to the point where uh, you will still allow me to work on you, I will work on you. Mm-hmm. You know, the clay doesn't do that on its own. You can't just throw a blob of clay on a thing and then start spinning it. It's mm. still going to be a blob of clay. It's just going to look, you know, it might be you know, wopsided or something mm-hmm. like that, but it's not going to – you have to have a potter to actually make that clay become something, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was sitting there thinking about, like, how when you first get the piece of clay on there, like, it's really, like, hard. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you got to mm-hmm. put water on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but when, once it gets to going, you know, it's, it, you're, it's easier to shape. But, like – Clay is never like you can mess it like it can be so deformed and everything, (laughs) but you can still shape it back in. Mm. And like God never, never throws us away. You know, as as long as we're still breathing, like God has a plan for us and wants to use us to further His kingdom. Um, And I just like how it's like like you were saying. The clay doesn't tell the potter right. how mm. this is supposed to play out. That's right. You know, yeah. the, mm. it's the potter who's in in control, mm-hmm. and you know, the clay. I mean, like you know, the clay is rep- represents Israel, and the right. potter mm. represents God. And it's like even though the clay can't tell the potter what to do, 
like Israel, if they changed their actions, mm-hmm. like if they repented in here, right. mm-hmm. then it would change how God, you know, was right. going to mm-hmm. deal with them. Right. Which, you know, in this context, to me, just that repentance means I'm just turning my life back over to you. Do something with it. And, and you're right. This this is particular about you know the nation of Israel, but man, it, the connotation to us today about whether we will allow God to to mold us and mm. shape us, you know, um, and and do those things that he, you know, we we might have an idea. Hey, I want to be a cup, but God says, no, I want you to be a bowl, you know, and mm. uh, you know, so He's going to shape us out. And and you say there is no point of, you know, as long as the clay is pliable mm-hmm. and willing yeah. to be able to be shaped, yes, but if you go on down to uh, chapter 19, yeah. uh, the Lord tells Jeremiah, says, go buy a potter's clay jar, take some to the elders and some to the leading priest. He goes on further and he says, take that jar and he carries it in front of the people and he busts it, mm-hmm. you know, right in front of them, um, you know, and I'm assuming that jars were of some value mm-hmm. because you didn't just go. There wasn't, uh, you know, the Bethlehem Walmart. I don't think was open yet. <laughs> uh, so yeah. it was, you know, to get a jar. You know, those were valuable. So they probably took very good care mm-hmm. of them. I would think to try to keep them from being chipped or broken or cracked or whatever, because they couldn't repair. They didn't have super glue. They didn't have mm-hmm. a, a epoxy or anything like that. Uh, all it was really good for was to be thrown out. Mm-hmm. And for him to show that sign act of busting that clay pot, you know, you know, if you just take that forward and just say, "Look, you have become to the point where I I, I can't do anything with you. You're you know, hardened. You are so hardened yeah. that I can't shape you. You won't allow me to work. You know, you think about all those, you know, stiff necked, hardened heart, you know, um, statements that he made to the Israelites and. The, and it's just, you know, you have gotten to the point where I just I can't do anything with you. Now, we don't like to think about God just throwing us away, but there's biblical support of there comes a point sometimes if you are just a stumbling block, he will put you to the side. Yeah, he, he will move you out yeah. of the way. He will mm-hmm. not let you become a problem for um, the expansion of his kingdom. Right? You know, like uh, – like, um Pharaoh, you know, it right. says God hardened his heart, but that was only after Pharaoh had hardened his own heart. That's right. Like he mm-hmm. had, That's right. he mm-hmm. had, um, you know, the decision in that mm-hmm. too. Like um, mm-hmm. it's, I think it's in, it's in Exodus, and then it talks about it. Um, I think in Hebrews too, where like it wasn't just God that hardened Pharaoh's heart. No, it, it was Mm-mm. like Mm-mm. he had a part of that too. Right. And so, so what are we gonna do? You know. Yeah. We just got to pray yeah. to stay pliable, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because God may change us and work on us. Mm-hmm. You know, heaven help me. I know I need some time on the spinning wheel every you know, <laughs> spinning yeah. wheel, a uh, potter's yeah. wheel yeah. every now and then, you oh, know, because yeah. it's just, and, and you never, you know, I hate that thought of, well, I'm just too old or I'm just, you know, I'm. I'm of no use. No, that's not true. You know, uh, I can still continue to be shaped if I will allow God to work on me and not harden my heart toward God. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a great, that's a great highlight. All right. So I think you got the shadow. I got the shadow, and we're going to be in um, Judges chapter Mm. six, verses thirty, thirty-six through forty, and this is where Gideon. Gideon has just been called by God to be the judge. Mm-hmm. Then he, um, God, um, instructions instructs him to, or tells him after he, during the call, he has an encounter with an angel and tells him during the call um, that he's going to be victorious over the Midianites mm-hmm. who have invaded mm-hmm. their land. Said you're gonna, you're not gonna die. You're mm-hmm. gonna, you're gonna be victorious here. Right. Then um, there's a, a like a miracle where the angel of the Lord um, does a like has this miraculous fire come and consume this offering that Gideon gives, mm-hmm. this animal sacrifice where this it's just miraculously consumed, mm-hmm. um, and all these you know different things. And then he goes and destroys um, some. Uh, altars of uh, uh, Baal, mm-hmm. 
Then we get to this sign of the fleece. And God has already commanded him and told him, you're going to be victorious over the Midianites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, what Gideon does here is he lays out his Patagonian fleece <laughs> yeah. on the door and yeah. says, if you'll make just the fleece wet mm-hmm. and everywhere around the ground dry, right. then mm-hmm. I'll know you're going to use me to mm-hmm. deliver mm-hmm. the Israelites and I'll be, we'll be victorious Which would have been a miraculous event for just the fleece to have been wet and right. nothing else, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. That mm-hmm. would have been a, a miraculous thing. Mm-hmm. When you're reading this, it kind of catches you off guard because you're like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's, right. it seems like he's testing God, and that's exactly what he's doing. Exactly. And yeah. he, does the, he does it again. And, but God actually grants the request. He mm-hmm. makes the fleece wet mm-hmm. and the gr- ground's dry. Then, then he does it again. Gideon says, "Okay, do the opposite now. Mm-hmm. Make the ground wet and the fleece dry." Yeah. And God does it. Yeah. And there's no. It doesn't say anything in there like God's anger burned against Gideon right. or anything. Mm-hmm. It just says mm-hmm. God did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then Gideon sees this those those two signs and and then he proceeds and they are victorious in battle. Um, uh, and they didn't even use their whole army. Um, it was it was a miraculous def, uh, defeat of the Midianites. Um, but like, what's perplexing about you know what makes this passage a shadow is how the Bible doesn't really comment on like whether this was right or wrong of Gideon to do. Right. Um, but I mean, I think we can see it as like it was definitely a lack of faith on Absolutely. Gideon's part. And what Gideon, like Gideon was basically having second thoughts. Mm -hmm. And he was wanting to basically play it safe. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about the way we we do with our faith and our and our Christian walk. We love to play it safe. You know, we want to make double sure that (laughs) like even though we might be sure that God has told us to do something, Mm -hmm. to step out in faith, you know, to to go on that mission trip. To share the gospel with that coworker, to call that family member that doesn't know Jesus, and just take a risk and, and share the gospel with them, whatever that might be that you know that God has called you to do, we want to just play it safe, and we have second thoughts about it. Oh yeah, and what's funny, uh, funny uh, about Gideon is when when God's calling him, He calls him actually. I think the term is valiant warrior. Mm-hmm. He says. You you are, and he seems like he does everything else but be a valiant warrior. Now he turns out to be, you know, a very good judge, mm-hmm. and and you know, judge being kind of a ruler, military type, mm-hmm. you know, uh, here. But I, I was just thinking too, uh, you know, that he had heard a lot of what God had done. You know, this was a couple of hundred years since they entered the Promised Land. Mm-hmm. He had heard a lot, but then these Midianites were have been a problem for quite mm-hmm. some time, mm-hmm. and he just liked the faith because mm-hmm. he just didn't. He heard about what God had done through other people and through, but he hadn't seen what God had done in his own life, and I think. I think God was a little sympathetic there, you mm-hmm. know, even though, because you're right, there, how many other stories, you know, uh, where it's like, I think about when Sarah laughs, you know, uh, about having a child, mm, uh, yeah. God says, why'd she laugh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'm thinking, man, there's just a laugh, you know, yeah. here, you know, you're having to do magic tricks, you know, uh, to, to make to Gideon them, yeah. happy, you know, but... Um, I think he understood Gideon's heart. He understood, you know, what Abraham, you know, should be doing, you know, and what he was expecting out of them, you mm-hmm. know. And it's okay to say, I don't have, you know, I'm lacking some faith here, God. Oh, yeah. Will you show me something, yeah. you know? But there's also a time where you got to put all that down and just mm-hmm. say, I'm, I'm going forward, you know, uh, too. And uh, it's just, you know, I think you got to let the God. God deal with you, you mm-hmm. know, in those situations personally. I guess you know. Yeah, I mean, God, God wants us to give Him what we got. Yeah. Mm. Even if what we got, you know, I mean, we might, you might be at a, a time in your life where your faith is weak right now, mm-hmm. and your all you got is twenty five percent. That's right. You know, mm. give that to God. Yeah. You know, mm. it's like um, I think it's in Mark where um, 
the man whose son is healed, he says, "Help, help my unbelief." Right. Mm-hmm. Like I'm part, I'm almost there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just help my unbelief. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I and I mean because God knows anyway. Right. He knows mm-hmm. where we're at, and I think you know with um, with Gideon, God was more concerned with keeping his promises uh, to Gideon, saying mm-hmm. that you you would be victorious. Keeping it, he was more concerned with that, keeping his promises and delivering Israel from the That's Midianites right. yeah. than he was Gideon's mm-hmm. unbelief. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, it's like for us as believers, God has told us that, you know, book, through Jesus Christ, death, resurrection, and ascension, like we are victorious. Mm-hmm. We have the victory. It's already been won for us. Right. But yet we still want to you know we still want to play it safe That's we right. don't want to we don't want to claim those victories um yeah. over sin and death and mm-hmm. um you know it's 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 amazing that um even though like you know the the holy spirit has has given us re- that reassurance through the word and through his right. spirit mm-hmm. and through the local church we still just want to fall back right. on playing it safe and we want you know, we, we, we doubt. We yeah. doubt the victory. And, you know, I, I, I'm i sure you'd probably say the same thing. I, my faith is stronger because I've seen things that God's done in my life that I wasn't as strong in the faith mm. before then. Yeah. You know, so it does sometimes take those testing God. You know, we almost say that uh, Gideon here was, was putting God to the test testing God to see what God would do mm-hmm. uh, to build your faith up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, God needs us to be part of the the process, part mm-hmm. of the expansion of the kingdom of God. So go forward. If you need God to show you something, tell him, show you something. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, and you can yeah. Op- you can you can open up the word. <laughs> yeah, and that I don't one know of the primary that ways he shows your, us stuff. Uh, Patagonia fleece yeah. on the ground and asking him to do that is probably the right thing no. to do right now. <laughs> but uh, but if you ask him, I think he'll show you some things. Yeah, yeah. he will. Mm. All right, and I think you have our application. I do have our application, so we're uh, going to hit all the different uh, columns in our reading group this week. Uh, we are uh, going to go to Psalm 127. Uh, this psalm I was reading um, in one commentary. Now you read in another that uh, maybe it wasn't so much, but this psalm being ascribed to Solomon and and some of the wording does mm-hmm. make you think Solomon uh, because it's a it's a wisdom type psalm. It's a psalm of a song of ascents is what they call it, like a uh, an upward psalm, mm-hmm. uh, a calling out to God psalm, you know, a kind of that, but. I just think it's really neat and very practical. And of course, Solomon, being Solomon, who Solomon was, was a very practical, wise person, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it says, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays alert in vain. In vain you get up early and you stay up late, working hard to have enough food. Yes, he gives sleep to the one uh, he loves. And then it goes on to talk about family things mm-hmm. and and um, uh, other other things but it, it it's just those those tasks that it starts laying out you know building a house you know staying alert you know uh, keeping uh, safe that watchman you know uh, that gathering of food you know that providing for your family you know those things that we really we we do right mm-hmm. we have to do mm-hmm. we we are concerned about doing uh, and we do it but what the psalm is saying is and there's two ways to do it. One way is doing it within the will of the Lord, mm-hmm. and one way is doing it your way mm-hmm. without the Lord's um, hand over it, without mm-hmm. the Lord, without you consulting the Lord, without you praying to the Lord uh, about how you're doing this, the process that you're going through, leaving God out of it or putting God in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And he's and and the psalmist is just saying, look, if I leave God out, it's vain, it's mm. worthless. Mm-hmm. It at the end of the day, what you think you've accomplished, you haven't accomplished. Mm-hmm. It's and, and and you know that that terminology is is very reminiscent of uh, Ecclesiastes mm-hmm. when yep. we know what Solomon has done. You know, he was one of the richest, if not the richest, uh, mm-hmm. person in the Old Testament. I think. 
uh, very successful, a king, uh, multiple wives. Yeah, I guess if that's successful, <laughs> mm. I don't know. <laughs> I have a hard time with just the one. Or I don't you're know. Down. I don't know. God should make a bunch wise, of kids. And, you know, yeah. it, just very fruitful uh, appearing and very. Um, uh, you know, his stature is is. Um, you know, uh, one of renown. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like he had. You don't think of Solomon and say, "Oh, he was terrible." You think mm-hmm. of Solomon, and you think, yeah. "Man, you know, the wise king, right?" Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, you know. But at the end of Ecclesiastes, he says, I- "I've done all these different things, and I just see that it's vanity. It's mm-hmm. all vanity. It was all just for me, uh, but because unless it's pointed to the Lord, unless it's for the Lord's benefit, unless it's." to God with praise, those things are just worthless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and then it makes me think of uh, John fifteen five that says, I am the vine and you are the branches, and right. he who abides in me will bear much fruit, but apart from me you can do nothing. Not saying like you can't do anything without God, because you can, it just won't mean anything. That's right. It'll yeah. be empty, in a, an empty you know accomplishment. And, you know, like this psalm is to me is like saying that unless like it's not saying that you can just sit back and do nothing, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. God will just do everything for that's you. Right. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's not true. Um, although it doesn't say in the Bible that those who God helps those who help themselves. That's right. not a Bible no, that's verse, not by a verse. the way. Yeah. We need but, a podcast on that. Yeah. One, yeah, but <laughs> but like it's like, you know, we have responsibility, human right. responsibility. And, but even though God is sovereignly in control. That's right. Um, you know, we still have to do things, but unless we involved God as the director mm-hmm. of our life mm-hmm. and not make, you know, ourselves the director of our own lives, right. you know, only then will we have any kind of level of satisfaction right. and, and meaning, uh, you know, meaningfulness in life. Yeah, and you start thinking, well, what's the practical application of that, of how to involve God or how mm. to make sure that these things that you're going to be doing are actually within God's will? Mm-hmm. Um, certainly prayer, right? Mm-hmm. Confirmation. Asking God to direct your paths, uh, studying your words so that you know what you're doing is, uh, you know, in conjunction mm. or not anti, you know, what God has, has commanded us to do. Um, godly counsel. Godly too. counsel is is great. You know, all those things. Just don't leave God out of them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, uh, you know, man. We can go to work every day. We can provide for our families. We can be the best dude out there, you know. But if it's just saying, look, if if you didn't involve God in any of that, at the end of the day, what you've built is worthless. Mm-hmm. It's worthless, mm-hmm. you know. And we, I love that verse. You know, it says if you can't do anything because. And my human mind says, well, no, I can do a whole bunch. Of, I know a bunch of guys right now that would say, oh, no, you know, I built this, I did this, I created this business, I accumulated this wealth, mm-hmm. I, you know, stored up this stuff. But God says, you know, without me, these things have no value mm-hmm. whatsoever. You yeah. Know? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, that's another one, another week in the books. Um, look to some uh, surprise guest coming Man. to you in the next few weeks, starting next week. Is that so a tease? A little, little teaser there. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So tune in next week. All right. Thanks. See ya.